Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Tuplex. Welcome to the second episode of our tutorial series. So we've got uh, science packs going and we've got gears and circuits. Um, our electronics research is done. So I'm gonna start with steel processing now. We'll get that started. Um, another item that we're gonna need quite a lot of are small electric poles. So I'm going to, I'm gonna set up another production chain here with two more factories to make those poles. All right. And it looks like we get two of those every cycle. Uh, let me go ahead and craft a few more inserters. And you can see that now that we have gears and circuits in our inventory, those get made a lot faster. All right, and then here we need to make wood. All right, so the poles take uh, two copper cables and two wood for each. So since we're already making copper cables, we'll go ahead and feed that down there. Put a wooden box. Let's make a couple more chests. Actually, let's try to keep all the chests fairly close to one another so that we don't have to walk all over the place to pick these things up. Very good. And then if we drop our wood in the chest, that should take care of things for us. There we go. All right, take our gears. Uh, I did load these chests up recently, so uh, we should be good for now. All right, uh, and actually now that I look at this, we do have some redundancy on the gear making here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Simplify things a bit. That should alternate between putting gears here and putting gears here for the science production. And then we can take the iron out of there since we're grabbing it from this box. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> now the other thing that we can do at this point is start making a few fast inserters. And I'm gonna put those in slot four. And we can go ahead and upgrade some of these things to fast inserters. Yeah, that doesn't need a fast inserter. Um, but gears take two iron plates every half a second, so um, a fast inserter is appropriate there to keep that going full speed. Um, the outputs we can leave at normal speed. Okay. So scrub that. Uh, we'll need to get some more wood soon, but for now we're good. All right. <clears throat> so since the last episode, uh, I've done a little bit of planning for our smelting area. And for this base, we're going to need... Oh, you know what? Before we do that, let me make a radar and put that down here. Um, the radar is good because that will start to scan the area and tell us where we can get more resource patches. So we want to get that set up fairly early. <coughs> that also gives us the ability to uh, zoom in from the map view. Uh, so that way you can see what's going on in your base even though you're not there at the moment. All right, so like I said, I've been doing some planning for the smelting area and I'll take you over there now. We are going to need for this base, uh, we're gonna need to have four smelting lines for iron, four for copper, one for steel, uh, and then a small one for stone brick. Um, and uh, I'll show you what I've got here. 
And I've used a blueprint to help lay this out and plan it. Now I put it up here just because uh, we're gonna need a lot of space for this. And so I wanted to get north of this lake and I wanted to get north of this stone patch because I wanna use that to make stone brick. And then I put some marks on the mini map, which you can do if you just click on the map, uh, you can choose an icon. You can add text to it if you want. You know, so like if I click on this, I could say, whoops. I could say copper, for example, and it'll put a label there. Um, in this case, I don't think we need the text. The icon is enough, but we'll have copper smelting, iron smelting, and steel smelting, and then down here we'll be making stone brick. So what I did is I laid out uh, just kind of the space that we need using a blueprint. And uh, let me show you how I did that. If you press B, that'll pull up the blueprint menu. Uh, you click new blueprint, and then you can use that to, you know, to grab items and make a print. And then if you um, put down that print elsewhere, then you can make copies of whatever is on your blueprint. Okay, I'm gonna delete that one. Um, and then there's also a deconstruction planner, which is basically how you erase those things. Um, you can also erase them by right-clicking on a ghosted item. Um, and the way that I made these in the first place is I took the item that I wanted to, uh, to ghost, and if you shift and click it, it'll just place it down as a ghost rather than actually placing the item, all right? So this will be copper. So we have one, two, three, four lines of copper. And then I have six spaces because we're gonna put a walking path there. And then I have four lines of iron. And then up here will be one line of steel. All right. So to begin with, we just need to set up the first line of each of those things. Um, I don't want to set them all up now because um, right now we only have stone furnaces and these will all need to be steel furnaces eventually. Um, so rather than setting up, uh, and they'll also need to have red belts rather than yellow. So rather than setting everything up now, we'll just get one line of each started to get our base going. And then when we make steel furnaces and red belts, then we'll go ahead and put the rest of them in. That way we won't spend a lot of time um, building something that's just going to have to be upgraded anyway. Okay, so let's get started. All right, steel research is done. Let's do automation two. All right, so uh, we need 24 stone furnaces on each side. Um, 24 stone furnaces will, on each side, uh, 48 total, will completely saturate a yellow belt. Actually, 47 will do it, but uh, that's an odd number. So we're going to do 48, 24 on each side. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. And if you lose count, you can take one of your blueprints and select the whole thing and it'll tell you how many you have. All right, so that's 24 furnaces. Let's go ahead and blueprint that and I'm gonna shift left click and that helps to simplify where we need to put things on the next one. All right, now I'm leaving one space in between every two so that we can put power poles. So that's where our power poles are gonna go. Uh, while I'm doing this, let's start crafting yellow inserters. We're gonna need two for each of those. So for this line, we're gonna need uh, 96 inserters. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and do that again 10 more times. There, lots of inserters. And uh, 
that's why it's a good thing that we made. We can craft it circuits in, or we automatically crafted circuits and gears already. Otherwise, it would take forever to get all those things made. Um, and then we're also going to need to start making a lot of belts. So I'm going to go ahead and just right click the belts about a hundred times and get that going. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let's start placing our inserters. All right, and I'm doing doing these in pairs. Um, and basically this is going to go, uh, we've got one inserter that's going to be loading coal and ore. And then the inserters in the middle are going to be taking the plates out. All right, so I'm, I'm going to show you how to set up one line and then we're going to cut away and uh, I'll do the other ones off camera. And uh, that way you won't have to sit and watch me do this for like an hour and a half. Because that's not terribly exciting. All right, so I'm going to put my belts in slot one. All right, so this belt down the middle will be where the, in this case, copper plate comes out. And then these belts on the side are going to be where the copper ore and the coal go. And I'm going to need a handful of splitters and underground belts. Let's see, we'll put that there. I like my splitters on two, my underground belts on three. That's all just personal preference, obviously. All right, let's start making more belts in the meantime. All right. So what's going to happen here is we're going to have a line of copper ore coming in, and then we're going to have another line of coal. And what I want to do is I want to have half of this belt with coal and the other half with the copper ore. So we can use a splitter to do that. And uh, I'll show you how. Um, yeah, that's enough room. Yeah, so coal is going to come in here, let's say. All right, so the ore comes in here, it goes into this splitter, and it gets split in half. Half of it goes this way, half of it goes that way. And then the coal comes in here. I'm gonna jump across and loop into this splitter, and that'll put coal on the other side of these belts. All right, so that's the that's the standard smelting setup. And there it is. So now we're ready to start mining copper. Uh, and the next thing that we need to do is make a lot more belts, first of all. Um, and then we need to make the electric mining drills. So I'm going to go ahead and start crafting a few, no, let's not do that. Let's see, right click these. Um, I'm canceling this because this is starting to handcraft circuits, which I definitely don't want to do. All right, let's grab this copper plate. We're gonna need that. I think we're doing okay on iron right now, but since we're running this way, we might as well reload these furnaces and grab what we have there. All right, let's get our circuits. Let's, I'm gonna control right click. That puts half of what I have in the chest. There we go. So we'll keep this going. Um, and here, I'm going to limit this chest to four stacks of gears. Now, let's say two stacks of gears. All right, so let's go ahead and grab that. So when you do that, then 
the chest will only fill up the first two slots and then it'll stop. That way I don't use up all my iron making gears before I get circuits done. All right, so let's make a couple handfuls of electric mining drills. And then I'll craft a bunch more belts. Oh, let's check on power here. All right, I think it would be, oh yeah, good thing I checked. Yeah, let's make, um, let's make more power. So I'm gonna make another boiler and two more steam engines. Uh, let me, let me stop this first. There we go. All right, so we'll put another boiler here and then we'll put our steam engines. Now you can see we have a bit of a problem because of that power pole. So what I do is put a space of one for that second steam engine and add a section of pipe. And then I'll just repeat this down the line and that way we can put these power poles in the center. Um, if this unevenness bothers you, you can put a pipe in between every one. Like that. Uh, and that way it'll be even. It's totally valid and understandable. And that also gives you room to stick a light in there if you want. Alright, so let me grab some of that. Let's make another burner inserter. And I'm going to split this coal. So I'm going to control right click. I'll take out half of the coal that's in there. And I'll put that there. All right, so we just doubled our power output. Um, and actually, before we start feeding that smelting line, I think it would be a good idea to start mining coal automatically for the power. All right, so that's our closest coal patch up there. Not as close as I would like, but... Uh, that's the closest one. So let's start running power poles. So I'm just going to left click and run. Actually, I don't want to do that. We're going to pick this up eventually. So, all right. Yeah, so I left click and run. And when I do that, it'll drop power poles automatically. We can leave that there because we're going to need power poles for iron. Here we'll start to head north. I like to do these in straight lines at 90 degree angles. Uh, you don't have to do that, obviously. Okay, so let's put down a couple of mining drills. And we'll start right there. Let me, let's do this so it's going to be balanced. So we'll put another pole there. And then we'll put poles in the same places on the other side. And then we'll link them with one in the middle. And add a few more belts. Okay. So now we're making coal. And we're going to run this with a belt down to our power plant. And we can just follow this line of power poles. I better start making more belts because I'm going to run out. All right, one, two, looks like that's three spaces, so we'll keep it consistent here. Here. 
There we go. And now we can get rid of these boxes. All right. So eventually that coal will make its way down here <clears throat> and then we'll feed the power line automatically. Um, now we can also see that those mining drills are using up a lot of power. So you have to be careful when you start adding mining drills um, that you don't that you don't use up all of your power uh, because they do consume a lot of electricity and if you're not careful you'll add a bunch of mining drills and then your whole plant will start to brown out because you don't have enough electricity. So, so anytime you uh, make any significant expansion to your base you want to take a look at your electricity to make sure that you have enough. Okay. So the next step then will be to get some mining drills put on the copper. Uh, so just to get things started, I'll just do two sets of four. All right, and with these small power poles, if you put a pole every two, every two drills, that's enough. And you can saturate a mining drill, or I'm sorry, you can saturate a yellow belt with ore with, let me check here, how many drills? 26 mining drills will saturate a yellow belt. So that'd be 13 on each side. All right, and then we need to bring some electricity over here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we have copper, and we'll run that belt north from here. And I'm just looking at my mini-map to see when I get about even. Alright, and then we'll run it east. to get electricity over here as well. So let's work on that. And again, I'm just gonna follow these belts. Okay, and I think I can cut across here to connect to the main line. Okay, we're still doing good. Let's go take a look. And it would be a good idea to put another radar over here. So let's stick a radar right here. That should cover much of our smelting area. Uh, like I said before, you can, when you have the radar, you can see from map view. Okay, yeah, so we can see that those are starting to load in ore. Um, and now we need to get a coal line. Um, I'm going to put a splitter there because I'm gonna be sharing this coal line with the other smelters. All right, we're gonna need some more belt. Let's go ahead and do that. And let's make another mining drill as well. And I'll use this coal patch to start getting some uh, some coal sent up there. And we'll just do four mining drills for now. There. All right, let's set this up with electricity. Out of power poles. 
So let's grab a little bit more wood. Um, I'm gonna spend some time harvesting some wood so that we can get more power poles being produced. There we go. And I think I got that other mining drill now. All right, check our power situation again. Okay, we're still at about half capacity. All right, so once this coal gets up here, uh, we should see some plates starting to get made. And then what we're gonna do is put an underground belt and send the rest of the coal up that way. So that way we can share this coal line with all the smelting. All right, so let's just watch this get started. And then uh, that way you can see how this works. So again, the coal comes across here. It goes into that splitter and it gets split evenly on both sides. So we have a shared belt that makes uh, or that runs the copper ore or the iron ore and the coal and all that gets fed into the furnaces from that side and then the finished plates go out into the middle. All right, and this is how we're going to set up our smelting. Okay, so that's going to do it for this episode. Um, what I'm going to do in the meantime, and if you're playing along, uh, this will be your homework, is to set up one of these for iron. And that's going to be set up right here. Get some mining drills on an iron patch, and we'll go from there. Thanks again for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.